what's happening. Because if you want to manipulate someone and you don't want a challenge to that manipulation, what's essential to that? They don't know they're being manipulated. Secrecy. Now, yeah, but so, and so they would have been happy to continue the way they've been, which is the fact that they've been feeding off human uh, efforts, human energy, human emotions, all this stuff, feeding off human resources. Um, and, and they could just continue like that unchallenged. But they've had to up their game massively, um, and they knew that they would have to. That's why they've been planning this for so long. They knew they had to up their game to suppress a awakening humanity, um, which would which would start to see the game. But David, and they, if, if therefore, I... they couldn't hide it anymore. And because they've had to up their game, it's had to become manifest. Um, and 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 it's this. Uh, dual situation we have now whereby more and more people are waking up and opening their minds to a greater perception and at the same time the world before their highs in holographic reality is becoming it's showing them more and more obviously that actually the forces that control the world are not the ones they thought they were so this is this is this is um this is an amazing time to be in this reality. I'm bloody glad I chose to come here now I tell you <laughs> time to be here <laughs> But I have to tell you, I feel some irony here, and you will feel this as well, because you wrote about it yourself, and irony is also part of the solution you just um, talked about. And you're writing, ironically, the reptilians and their hybrid clones are terrified of humans, terrified of being exposed, there goes their secrecy cloth, and losing their energy source. And you're also saying the reptilians are themselves controlled by another force, other ETs, the transparents, I believe you call them. And you're saying that the reptilians themselves are, in a way, also an, an illusion, like the human race or the human body. They are computer programmed in this matrix. So there's even a deeper level to the irony, which is also part of the solution that they need us for their energy feeding frenzy, so to speak, the, 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 the energy of fear and uh, negative emotions. But at the same time, they're terrified of us, the small people, because we are in such large numbers and we are growing our consciousness. That's it, right? Yeah, but there's, yes, that, but there's another level to this, which is that when you are in a certain mental and emotional state, i.e. In, in, in the, the uh, example we're talking about, you desire uh, control over others, um, then you, by that state of being, for the very reasons we've been talking about here, um, you have a limit to, in effect, how fast you can vibrate and how much you can uh, access higher levels of consciousness. Um, whereas humans, vast numbers of humans, do not want control over other people um, and have the potential, if they do, to an extent, to, 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 to see the, the nonsense of it and to open their minds and their awareness and cease to want control over other people. And, and, and that means that human awareness is basically limitless in what it can expand to, to, to uh, connect with. Whereas the predator race, the um, manipulation uh, race and, 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 and in all its forms, does not have that potential until it sees what a nonsense uh, wanting control over is, and then the control system falls anyway because the people behind it don't want control anymore. So the... the, the um, the predator consciousness or predator uh, mind that, that, that is manipulating this reality, or the how part of it anyway, um, has to keep uh, humans in a smaller box of awareness and perception than it's in. Because it's in a box, and a very small box, really. It's much, much more, if you like, intellectually, therefore, 
in terms of technology and the, the possibility of manipulating reality more aware. But in terms of the truly aware, the truly conscious, it's, it's in a box. And what it's had to do is keep humans in a smaller box. Uh, it, it's like the old phrase, um, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king, um, uh, so that it can control us. And what this Truth Vibrations is doing is starting to open, tease open, in, in some people massively open, um, their minds to this greater awareness, and at, at which point, you know, we start to see and go beyond what this predator race can 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 perceive. And and one other thing, uh, John goes with a desire for power over, and that is um, insecurity. Uh, uh, secure people do not want power over anybody. They want power to create their own reality as they see fit, but they don't want power over others. Uh, be, and, and they don't want to control everything because they're much, uh, they're at ease with flowing with, with life and seeing where it goes, enjoying the adventure. They don't want to, they don't want to absolutely uh, be able to tell you what's going to happen next Tuesday, this Tuesday. They don't want to go to a football match and be able to tell you or be able to know what the score is before the game started because they're controlling both sides and the referee. They, they, they just want to play with life. Hey, be, this is great. It's going to be interesting who wins today or how the game uh, uh, unfolds. Um, and so what we're dealing with is a controlling mentality which appears to be strutting and arrogant and all-powerful uh, and it seems to be like that on one level, but it's the, it's 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 the little boy, the little frightened boy, inside the body of the playground bully, um, and he needs the gang to to give him confidence and to 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 let him overcome that little boy inside. Because the and, and and what happens with bullies is most of them are frightened little boys, and if you take them on, they 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 just fold before your eyes. And what their control up to that point has not been because they were stronger than you, but because you had the perception that they were stronger than you. And this is how the manipulation works, and this is how the programming works. And so we, um, we're in a situation where we're controlled by, an, by, by a mentality that is deeply, deeply, beyond our perception, uh, deeply insecure. And he's terrified of exposure, both because of the numbers, as you rightly say, but, but also the number difference, but also because of, of the potential, the true potential of humanity um, compared with the, the potential of the box they're in because of their state of being. And I quote in my, my last book, and I, I, I quote in my talks like in Amsterdam, uh, um, a guy called Don Juan Matos, who was the um, oh, yeah. shaman, shaman source in um, the Carlos Castaneda books of the 60s and 70s, a uh, Central American shaman. Some people say he didn't exist. Some people say he did. But whatever, the words put into his mouth are absolutely spot on. And I came across the the quotes that I use in the book um, while I was well into the book and after I'd come up with this whole perception and, 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 and background to the moon and what the moon is actually transmitting to affect us. And uh, I, I, get, I was like, whoa. This is absolutely encapsulating it. And, and one quote from Don Juan Matters, um, quoted by uh, Castaneda, said this. Um, I know even now that you never have suffered hunger. You have food anxiety, but, but you, have, you, you, you have food anxiety, which is none other than the anxiety of the predator who fears that at any moment now its maneuver is going to be uncovered and food is going to be denied. Because, as I explain in my book and in the talks, the predator mind has been conducted to the human collective mind, and therefore we feel a lot of the things that they're feeling. It's where anxiety and worry and all this stuff constantly, people feel, uh, comes from. So uh, Don Juan Matters goes on, through the mind, which is after all their mind, the predators inject into the lives of human beings whatever is convenient to them. And they ensure, in this manner, a degree of security to act as a buffer against their fear. This is crucial. I've been going on about this for 20 bloody years. Sorcerers of ancient Mexico reasoned that man must have been a complete being at one point, with stupendous insights, feats of awareness that are mythological legends nowadays. And then everything seems to disappear. And we now have a sedated man. 
What I'm saying is that we have against us not a simple predator. It is very smart and organized. It follows a methodical system to render us useless. Man, the magical being that he is destined to be, yes, he is, as this truth vibrations unfolds, is no longer magical. He's an average piece of meat. There are no more dreams for man, but for dreams uh, of an animal that is being raised to be a piece of meat, trite, conventional, imbecilic. And what he's talking about there um, in terms of this uh, sedated man, that's the fall of man. That's what, he, that's what he's talking about in his, in his own way, this sedated man, where we, we, we had stupendous insights, feats of awareness, mythological legends that I, I talked about uh, earlier, they're not mythological in the sense they weren't true. They, they, they're actually uh, memories and accounts of things that actually were real. And then everything, he says, seems to disappear and we have sedated man. Well, the reason everything disappeared, I would suggest, and we have sedated man and women, humans, um, is because of this hack, because of this takeover. Um, and I'm understanding more and more by the day how they've done it and how they're doing it. So why my talks are constantly updated as I go around the world, as I understand more. Well, we could say we are in line with the hive mind of our own predators. And, uh, exactly. And, and before you said something important, you desire control over others. Well, uh, one of our websites is healingsoundmovement.com. The other one is worldpeacechild.com. And I want to go to that because I think it's so important. It touched me when I heard those words, you desire control over others. Then I thought about the children. And I want to go into that because I also know you'd find this an important subject. Uh, what about the legalized children theft going on because that's a new chapter in your book and I was surprised you were writing about it and in a way I was shocked I mean there's a lot of shocking information if you never heard it before but at yeah. least you get the chance to resonate with it and change your perception so your world changes and it's not a flat earth anymore so that gives a lot of freedom in, in the end but this was shocking to me because I didn't know there was so much I know about pedophilia in the highest regions and everything but legalized children theft anything you want to say about that yeah, we see there are certain pieces when you put this puzzle together over the years, there are certain pieces that are um, far more important. They're transformative in your understanding of how it fits together um, uh, because what appears to be in isolation starts to fit into all these other pieces and you start to say, hey, so that's why that happens because of this and that's why that happens because of this. And when I've been um, researching this over the two decades, one of the things that came up pretty early on, really, as I researched the people, the personnel behind the control system in what you might call the human level, our, our uh, conscious reality, mm -hmm. that um, Satanism, the uh, sacrifice of humans, the sacrifice of, of animals, etc., and blood drinking rituals and all the rest of it, and um, uh, pedophilia came up again and again and again as I tracked these uh, uh, personnel through um, from being p politicians, etc., and bankers on CNN and, uh, uh, you know, Fox News and, and, and the BBC. Uh, as I tracked back from there, I started to see that again and again and again, I was looking at a pedophile. I was looking at a Satanist, often both. And, and it became clear um, that the ratio of Satanists and pedophiles to the what we call, laughingly, the upper echelons of society um, are I in infinitely greater than they are in the general population. Um, and so the question then is, why? What's going on here? And we come back to this predator race, um, what I call the, the reptilians, although it, there are other what are termed demonic entities that, that are involved as well. Mm. Um, not just reptilian, they seem to be a real prime one on the level that they operate, one step back from the, the, the human uh, bloodlines we call the Illuminati. Anyway, um, when they're doing these rituals, these satanic rituals, um, they are, in, in, on one, in one way, the way they do the rituals, and this is why they do the same rituals now that they were doing in ancient Babylon and so on, the way they do the rituals affects the energetic construct of the place where the ritual is taking place. 
and it allows um, often brief but doorways, vibrational doorways to open, um, which allow these entities uh, in the more extreme rit uh, rituals to manifest in front of them. I've talked to people who've taken part in these rituals who, who have, have described this to me, and not just one or two either, people in different parts of the world, um, uh, uh, how these entities manifest, and, and, and they manifest in certain, th these things like the, the, the pentagram, which of course the reverse pentagram is the classic symbol of Satanism, and th these other things. Again, we keep coming back to the same thing if we want to understand this. You look at a pentagram and it appears to be in the holographic world just a symbol. But if you take that symbol back to the um, metaphysical universe, the prime construct from where that symbol is manifest from, then it's information. And it, that information has an effect on other information around it in what we call the location of the ritual, which allows um, certain things to happen that wouldn't happen if that information hadn't um, been introduced, if you, if you follow what I'm saying here. Sure, like, you do. Like, like a cymatic influence creating a negative sacred space as a portal, something yeah, like and you, and you, Well, you can create a negative space and you can, you, you can, you, you can create a very benevolent, uh, uh, supportive space. But sure. It depends on the information you introduced into the place you're doing the ritual in. And the intention uh, you program it with, I guess. Exactly. Well, the, you, the, the intention um, uh, is, is, is an energetic uh, construct in itself, which you imprint upon everything that you do. Um, and so these satanic uh, sacrifice rituals, what's happening is in the holographic realm, you've got what we perceive as human Satanists doing their rituals, manifesting their demonic uh, masters. Uh, and even in the, the less um, kind of, if you like, advanced of them, allow manifestation like that, you've got human sacrifice. And what is happening is while the human uh, Satanists are doing the sacrifice and drinking the blood, and apparently just before sacrifice, as the terror and the victim builds up, there's an adrenaline um, that enters the blood that is like kind of a nectar to these people, these sick people. And, and so they drink the blood immediately. The sacrifice has been done because it still contains this, this, this um, adrenaline. Anyway, that's the human level. But, uh, but out just, just beyond this reality are these entities. And what they're feeding off is the energy of fear, the energy of terror, and the energy of, of, of the victim going through a, a, a horrendous... Um, emotional trauma. And so when you look at the, um, the ancient accounts around the world of human sacrifices made in the ancient world to quote the gods, and the gods are what I'm talking about, and the, the way they were perceived as gods, then they talk about um, sacrifices to the gods and what they were doing is what I'm describing. This is what the, the gods they were talking about are the ones I've just been uh, describing. Now move this on to pedophilia because this is why the rings of pedophilia and the rings of Satanism connect so powerfully. It doesn't mean that every Satanist is a pedophile or every pedophile is a Satanist or, or whatever, but a, a lot of them are both. And, um, the, their, their rings, their networks, certainly connect at certain levels, the top levels, uh, very, very fundamentally. Because of the energy vampirism, so to speak. Well, 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 be, be, because they're two expressions of the same mentality. Mm -hmm. Because as I go on to talk to about uh, pedophilia, these entities want more than anything human energy before puberty, because again, um, what happens at puberty? as we perceive it in the holographic realm, is that uh, there's a chemical change taking place, which fundamentally changes the body and fundamentally changes the nature of the person. Now, if you take that chemical change back to its, uh, its base construct, however, in the metaphysical universe, the waveform level, the base construct, then that chemical uh, is merely a, a holographic expression of vibrational information. And it's the vibrational information being introduced into the body, which is uh, uh, changing the body, um, which um, manifests as the chemical change uh, in, in the level of, of holographic perception. Because, of course, if uh, consciousness, um, a fully aware consciousness entered 
uh, this realm through a child's body, it would die of bloody frustration, wouldn't it? I mean, you, know, you imagine, imagine being you now in a child's body. I mean, you, you go crazy. Um, and, and so the body goes through certain stages. And as it goes through these stages, the seven years seems to be a, a, a pretty much a, a guideline of this. Then um, more of, of the, of, of, uh, of the uh, awareness manifests itself as, as the body allows it to, 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 to express itself. And so when you get to puberty, you're going through this massive change where the child is, is moving through to become the adult um, uh, physically. Um, and as a result of that puberty change or, or, or what triggers that puberty change is an information change at the waveform level, which is manifest as the chemical change in the world that we perceive. What is happening, in other words, is the information in that person's energy field is fundamentally changing at puberty and for some reason these entities want the energy before that change so when they talked in the ancient world about um, making sacrifices of young virgins to the gods the young virgin uh, was simply code for children and so what is happening is these I'm not saying this is always the case, I'm saying it's dramatically, overwhelmingly the case, is that these paedophiles, particularly, of course, these high-level paedophiles who are connected and possessed by these entities, um, they uh, are stimulated by this possession to want sex with children. When they're having sex with children, um, they are merely a conduit for the possessing entity to to uh, feed off and draw from the child um, the energy that these entities want. For them, and it's just a download, so to speak. Yeah, they're 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 vampiring. They're vampiring the child's energy through the conduit within the re this reality, which can directly, uh, sick as it may be, interact with the child. They're, they're using the paedophile as the conduit to, to, to vampire the energy. And um, there was another quote in the Carlos Castaneda books from uh, Don Juan Matters, which, in which um, Castaneda is um, explaining what Don Juan said to him. And he, uh, and he says this, uh, Castaneda, he explained that sorcerers saw infant human uh, beings as strange luminous balls of energy covered from the top to the bottom with a glowing coat, something like a coat of plastic adjusted tightly around the cocoon of energy. He said that uh, that glowing coat of awareness was what the predators consumed and that when a human reached adulthood, all that was left of that fringe awareness was a narrow fringe that went from the ground to the top of the toes. That fringe permitted mankind to keep on living, but only barely. And, and, my research over all these years has has found exactly that, which is why, you know, in my multi, multi level, multi subject years of research, um, Satanism and paedophilia has come up again and again and again in relation to um, the leading figures in the in this global conspiracy that running the banks, politics, uh, pharmaceuticals and all this stuff when you, you get to the, the uh, higher um, echelons but, and but, but, uh, but David hold on a minute am I right that they need and correct me if I'm wrong that they need uh, let's say it like this they need the biophysical energy fields frenzy to hold their form because otherwise they can cannot shape shift or is there more to it well th 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 there's more to it in the fact that the the, the entities themselves the, that are possessing the human hybrids the human uh, reptilian hybrids that I talk about, which we call the, 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 the ruling families of the banking system, royalty, politics, etc. Um, they, they're feeding off, off, off the energy of children and indeed the energy of humans in general, but, but children is what they want primarily or, 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 or more than anything else. But in, in the other way, yes, um, you see, these hybrids are um, part reptilian and, and part human, but they're more part reptilian than the general human population. People don't realize that the, um, the human body in general um, has a, 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 some fundamental levels of reptilian genetics in it, in, in it not least a, 
part of the brain which is known as the reptilian brain or the R complex as some scientists call it, uh, which is fundamental in um, human uh, behavior and human perception. It's uh, uh, constantly scanning the environment for threats to survival, not just physical survival, but financial survival, relationship survival, and uh, uh, job survival, and all the rest of it. And through the reptilian brain, this constant anxiety and fear and worry and lack of um, uh, lack of harmony, lack of uh, peace. Uh, comes from uh, overwhelmingly, and it comes through broadcasts I would suggest from the moon. But I, you know, that's a, a long story I go to in the books and the talks. But um, so the, the, these hybrid bodies are again, again, again go back to the foundation of what they are. They're waveform information, and so that waveform information contains information from uh, with a massively greater. Uh, input of the reptilian information uh, uh, compared with the human information uh, compared with the general human population. This is why these hybrids constantly interbreed with each other. The royal families, the uh, banking families, the political families. You 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 look at the the um, uh, the genealogy, and you're you're seeing again and again how these people interbreed into with each other. Why? Because when you breed that information, in other words, you exchange that information with the general human population, which has a different information construct, then the hybrid information um, uh, is diluted very quickly. So they are constantly interbreeding with themselves, downloading information uh, from the hybrid construct uh, with information from the hybrid construct in terms of their partner to create um, children, that uh, uh, offspring, that, that contain the same hybrid construct. This is why, why where all the interbreeding comes from, and it's like it's where all the blue blood interbreeding comes from, and how um, uh, oh we've got to keep the genes up. Well, it's not really keeping the genes up; it's keeping the gene uh, program the same. Um, and so, um, when we're talking about shape shifting, we're talking about those times, and it often happens when these people, the in, in these hybrids in apparently human form get into great states of emotion and fury um, because when you feel fury and, and you can often if it's really extreme you can actually feel almost like an electrical charge going through your body um, and when it gets um, really extreme that electrical charge can shift morph the information construct of the hybrid uh, a construct so that the reptilian part of it um, becomes the dominant one and at, at which point those observing that see someone apparently shift from a human form into a reptilian form and back again. But they're not physically shifting because there is no physical. What's happening is the observer is being shown human information. That's, so that's what they decode. A, di a different projection from an information signature was just shifted. Yeah, and, and, and then they're suddenly shown um, by, uh, reptilian information. They decode that. And then, and then um, after the morph, it morphs back to its base state, default state, if you like, and the human is, information is presented to them. Now, to the observer decoding this, someone's gone from human to reptilian to human, but the only, the only place it's happened, quote, physically, is in their decoding system, in their heads, on their screen. Um, and um, to stop this happening, because if you interbreed too much in certain ways, um, then with only within these hybrids, what tends to happen is that the gene uh, the reptilian genetics becomes more and more dominant uh, uh, over what we call time. And so the human form finds it harder and harder to, to hold steady and the, the, it keeps shifting. And so um, every now and again, they will have an infusion of human genetics into their um, hybrid state. To, to, to basically bring it back to this, this, this greater balance between human and hybrid so they don't keep shifting. Um, and one of the, one of the um, effects I'm very aware of of these truth vibrations, this vibrational change, this information change, is that they are finding it harder and harder to, to not shift. The software, because, they need another software upgrade. Yeah, and one of the things that they're doing, and this comes back to your question a few minutes ago, is that they're, they're, they're drinking more and more human blood which carries what? The human genetic code, the human information code. And so um, I, I was told about this, core dear, 
um, by uh, people who've been involved in this um, whole satanic situation. I was told this like, cool, 15, 16 uh, uh, years and, and, you know, since then, that um, this uh, drinking more and more human blood was, ha was starting to happen so that they could keep infusing the human uh, level or, 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 or the hybrid uh, construct with, with human information so that it could hold, hold that human projection so that we could go on believing and seeing the illusion that actually they're human in their entire state, they're not. Clear, okay, and I'm also thinking about um, another important aspect, talking about the religious mind prisons, and you're saying the high initiates know how to read the same religious stories symbolically, and my question is, what's the real deal going on here with all this religion? Because there seems to be an outer uh, expression of religion and an inner symbolic kind of religion with where people, uh, the high initiatives, know the real deal, right? Yeah, but you, you've got to get somewhere pretty close uh, to, the, to the spider, as I call it, uh, in, this, in this global web before you, you understand the true significance of, of, of what these um, texts are saying. Uh, because it's fiercely, fiercely compartmentalized. And there are legions of people at different levels of, for instance, the Freemasons, that think they've been told the truth um, as they go up the levels, but then find a, 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 at a higher level uh, being told that actually don't believe what you were told before. Uh, that was just for people at that level. This is the real truth. But then again, the same deal happens again, and they get a bit higher, and they realize that at that level, that wasn't the truth either. And Eventually, uh, you, you reach a, um, an inner core within this secret society network um, where the Freemasons uh, are the Knights of Malta, are the uh, Knights Templar, etc., are the, um, the Jesuits, are the Opus Dei. And um, at that level, um, you're beyond even the top levels of the secret societies like the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. Uh, there's two um, 30, 30, 30 degrees. There's that level where people are left to believe they've reached the top and they go no further because they didn't think there is any further. And there's another 30, 30 degree level where they become aware that the fact that they're, they are entering the bottom level of the next pyramid, which no one ever talks about. It's what I call the Illuminati pyramid, uh, which is fed into by the, the, the chosen ones through Freemasonry, Knights of Malta, Jesuits, all the ones I've mentioned and many more. Um, and so um, at that deeper, deeper level, they are given the language of symbolism and, and, and fundamentally the language of words, which seems obvious. Well, it's a words, words, of course, it's the language of words, but I mean the language of the real meaning of words, not the version of meaning that we um, have uh, been given. And so when something is said, we will read it one way because that's what we've been led to believe these words mean. Mm -hmm. But a, an inner initiate will know what they're really saying because he will know what the words really mean. And again, you know, uh, you know, to the, you know, uh, to the point of tedium, maybe uh, we've got to go back to the metaphysical universe because that's what words are. They're, they are vibrational information constructs. Um, and they manifest in the holographic world as what we call words. But, I mean, you know, why do we have um, vocal cords to vibrate? And they create sound through vibration, and the way we articulate that sound becomes the words that people hear coming from our mouths. Um, uh, but at their base state is um, vibration, and this is why uh, that... Uh, very interesting man, uh, Dr. Imoto in Japan, who I uh, co-wrote a book with in Japanese and uh, um, met and spent a whole weekend with on one occasion in London. Um, that's why um, he is able to uh, get canisters of water, um, put words on the side of it, like hate or love and appreciation, um, freeze the water very, very quickly. I've seen his... Um, operation in um, Tokyo where he does it mm -hmm. and and then once the water is frozen very quickly he then photographs the crystals immediately before of course it starts to melt and um, what he's found is is extraordinary uh, and he's produced many books of, with the pictures uh, whereby when you um, for instance see uh, 
water crystals that have had um, words of love and appreciation written on the side, just written in language, you know, with a pen or something. Um, the crystals um, from that water are beautiful. They're, they're harmonious. They are geometrically perfect often, but they're beauty. They're things of beauty. And then you see water crystals photographed after words of you make me sick, I want to kill you have been written on the side of the water. Um, and my goodness me, it's just horrible, horrible when you see the crystals. They have no form. They're just a mess, they're like a blob. Um, because um, when you, you're coming from where I'm suggesting, which is that everything in the holographic existence, what we call the physical world, is at its base a vibrational information uh, field, then words taken back from written language to their base state, which is vibrational, become vibrational constructs. And so when you put words of love and appreciation and you write them and attach them to the side of a uh, canister of water, they are vibrating um, into that water that information. Why? Because at their base state, they are waveform information, and the water is waveform information, and the canister the water is in is waveform information. And thus, there is an information exchange at the level of waveform. Uh, and thus, when you freeze the water, you freeze that information. And when you photograph it, you're photographing that information in uh, a water crystal form. And the water crystals, therefore, express the vibration that has been infused into the, into the water by the words. And this is why, you know, uh, and we all, have to, we all have to remember this. There's no exceptions. We need to think on how we use words and what the effect of those words are mm -hmm. um, on other people. I mean, e even on the basic uh, fact, uh, John, that um, the vast majority of the body is water then that water is being infused by the words that are spoken. Now, I mean, just take that another level, and where do most people spend hours and hours and hours a day of their lives? Sitting in front of a television being spoken at. Um, so, you know, you can see how, how the programming can work, not just in, in, in uh, an academic intellectual sense, but how it can happen on a, a waveform sense. And at the core of this, global network of, of manipulation, they bloody well know this. That's, and and, and, and they've, sure. they've, they've structured the, the, uh, the society, the world that we live in, uh, on the basis of knowing that. And that, that's why the, we live in the world that we, 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 we do. So um, it's, um, it's, 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 it's very important, uh, if we're going to understand what's happening in this world, to realize that it's just a holographic expression of information in the vibrational world. And the vast majority, I mean, of, of um, what we call our consciousness or mind is actually what is known as the subconscious. Um, and the conscious mind uh, that we're aware of in our everyday lives is a fraction of, of, of actually the, the deeper levels of mind. And that, 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 those levels of mind um, are what? They're vibrations, they're vibrational constructs. So, our, the vast majority of our mind um, is actually attached to the metaphysical universe and there is affected by it and is affecting it. And um, this is why uh, people's personalities are, are, are so fundamentally uh, driven by um, subconscious states of, of, of being, subconscious mental and emotional states. I have to tell you, being a sound healer and a music producer and a neuropsychologist and being a little bit of an expert on the non-local consciousness and the biophysics of information transfer at a distance and uh, you can call it biophysics or scalar electromagnetics or digital biology, all those kind of things and they still work uh, on a, a physical level, but although right. not, not psychoneuroimmunological, so local but 
as field effect um, going out into the world, but you can also have the cosmos coming into your world or a TV, so you're completely right here. But I think it's important to say that sound, like it shows in cymatics, is a carrier wave of consciousness, so you're absolutely right. And I just want to say, as being a neuropsychologist, that I know that the ear, where it vibrates, so to speak, the inner ear, is connected to the, the tenth nerve, and that nerve goes to all organs. So imagine what sound can do because it's connected to throughout our whole body. Absolutely, and and and, and you know when I when I talk about um, the, the what I call the body computer um, decoding reality, um, I don't just mean the brain. Obviously, the the brain, which I call the central processing unit of the body computer, the CPU. Um, is is the prime uh, as the CPU is in a in a computer in front of me is the prime uh, processor of information traffic on one level, but the whole what we call genetic structure um, is is doing the decoding because on 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 one fundamental level the human body computer is a crystalline receiver transmitter of sure. information and yeah. and yes it's the, it's the whole genetic structure all cellular structure that is decoding uh, reality all the time. And so, uh, again, you know, you get, the, the, the more you talk about this, um, the more that I uh, go through these different levels, the more pe people, I hope, can see how all these different levels connect and all these dots connect. Because if you can infuse um, rogue information, the equivalent of a computer virus, into the body computer via um, additives in food, additives in drink and water, like fluoride and, and aspartame and all this stuff, um, and through electromagnetic pollution, microwave pollution, mobile phone pollution, and all the rest of it. Vaccinations. Um, yeah, vaccinations is classic. It's classic. Just it, it's rogue information. It's a computer virus. Um, and and uh, the people behind the people who do it and behind the people who um, physically produce it, um, uh, they know exactly what uh, vaccines are doing. Uh, and uh, it's all coldly calculated. And so um, what's happening is that they are um, distorting the body's ability to decode information in the way that it normally would. And, and, and th this is all part of the destabilization of human awareness as well. And the reason all this stuff is coming in now, or has come in over the last few decades particularly, I mean, the whole chemical food thing has really started after the Second World War and it's, got, it's just gone crazy till it's now the norm. Um, it's all coldly calculated to distort the body computer's ability to decode this new vibrational um, information, all part of the... Uh, the firewall um, against the truth vibrations, if you like. And we um, uh, are uh, seeing the same with genetically modified food, which is designed to genetically modify us and distort our, the way that we interact with reality. It's, it's, that's what it's there for. And it's all connected. It's all connected. And uh, when people see that, they can cross this line from seeing even if they're a, a bit more aware of the great injustice in the world and the great um, ludicrous ways that things are done, ludicrous on the level that you're perceiving them from the fact that the people doing it are, should be serving humanity or have some benevolent uh, agenda for humanity, it looks ludicrous. But when you realize they have a completely evil, the, 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 the reverse of live very, very appropriately um, uh, agenda, um, uh, for humanity, then you then you start to understand why they're doing what they're doing, and uh, it's uh, it's all about um, suppressing our ability to awaken. Well, regarding that last sentence, we are living in Holland. You are coming to Amsterdam on the twenty seventh, twenty seventh of November to Rai Amsterdam. And, yeah, week uh, on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, www.purityevents.nl. But we are in Holland. Any words for the Dutch royals? I'm thinking Bernard, Beatrix. Oh, well, they, they are um, uh, part of this whole bloodline network. Um, that's why you've got the Dutch royal family uh, who are some of the most regular attenders um, from the start of, of things like the Bilderberg Group, this uh, grouping of people to um, coordinate the same agenda through politics in different countries and banking and business and, and NATO and all the rest of it. 
And there are, and, and are, am I correct? There are Nazi links as well to Bernard oh, and, and to Merck and the, the vaccination industry. Oh, there's, 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 see, because because of, you've got this web. Once you start investigating one part of the web, i.e., for instance, the Dutch royal family, then you start to hit all the other parts of the web. That's why this what you've just described always kind of happens. And I was speaking in Barcelona um, about uh, ten days ago, and like I said earlier. And one of the things I pointed out there is that um, they don't have a Spanish royal family, just as we don't have a British royal family. Uh, and, and, and you don't have a, uh, I mean, I'm going to look at this in more detail before I speak on uh, a week on Saturday, but you don't really have a Dutch royal family. Uh, because when you uh, look at the genetic background and the uh, genealogy, um, you've got um, uh, King Carlos of Spain and his wife, uh, Queen Sophia, who, who are really from a host of European uh, bloodlines, German and, and British and, and Danish and all the rest of it. And then you look at um, the British royal family, um, who were only called Windsor, by the way, because they changed their name during World War I. Uh, before um, that point, they were called the House of saxe coburg gotha which is a German royal line, or at least it, it, it goes back to Germany. And it's, goes, and it's the same with Rothschilds and Rockefeller, right? Well, yes, they, they, they originate from Germany. Goldman and Sachs, uh, uh, that became Goldman Sachs, originate from, from, from Germany, from Bavaria. Um, and, and then uh, you look at uh, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, German. Um, and, 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 and they'll go out into other uh, parts of uh, the, the European uh, royal family network because it's not the royal families of Europe, it's the royal family of Europe. And um, so you've got Prince Philip, who's the, uh, the, the, the husband of um, our Queen Elizabeth II. And he's, from, he's got uh, German uh, uh, genetic uh, connections and r r relations and uh, relatives. And same, uh, it goes into to the Dutch and the Greek uh, uh, areas of Europe. Uh, not the Dutch, the uh, Danish, rather, in the Greek areas of Europe. And so um, it's, 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 it's like a, a corporation. And it's like, hey, hey, we've got a vacancy in Greece. You know, we're going to have to ro roll found. OK, well, what about so-and-so? He's in, he's in Denmark at the moment. Shall we send him? Oh, yes, he'll be good. Yes, well, now, he's, now, he's a Greek, or now he's a Greek king or something. And I said, oh, it works. It's not uh, the way people, uh, people see it, because... Um, in terms of the, uh, the British royal family, the Windsors, of course, they found themselves, as the German house of Saxe-Cobo Gotha, um, in a country that was a war with their homeland, Germany, during the First World War. So it was kind of bad PR, so they changed the name to Windsor, just for that reason. And we had another um, aristocratic royal um, a bloodline in Britain before that point called Battenberg, which, of course, is German. And they changed that to Mount Batten, um, at the same time, to to because the, their country or the country they are supposed to represent as royals was at war with with their homeland, Germany. I mean, it's like it's if it wasn't so tragic for human life and human suffering, it, it would, would be it hilarious. would be a great joke. Yes, it would be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it, yeah, it's the Queen. She represents England. Oh, sure she does. Yeah. Well, I, well, uh, unless England's, you know, just invaded Germany and like America was supposed to invade the Isle of Wight, as I talked about earlier. Well, she's not really English, right? Uh, in, in, that, in that sense, certainly the royal family is. Unfortunately, it is not hilarious. It is tragic. But talking yeah. about the, the Nazi links to the royals, um, I believe we could also backtrace this to the esoteric occult and to the religious aspect, because I think it's important to uh, to tell the general listeners this. You're writing that the crown, well, actually the crown temple, controls and owns the world, even America and the UK, the banking, the legal system, everything. But... Who, in the end, David, controls the crown? I thought that was a, the answer is quite fascinating. So the crown owns the world, the banking legal system, but who controls the crown temple? Well, the thing is that it, it, it's, a, it's like a web. You can, you can symbolize it as, um, <coughs> oh, God, I need a bit of healing. Um, you, you can symbolize it as a pyramid with, the, with a few at the top of the capstone and the rest coming down into mainstream society at the bottom. Or you can symbolize it as a spider's web with a spider at the center and, and, and the strands going out. And each of the strands is a secret society or an organization or a government or, or, or a pharmaceutical company, whatever. And the closer the strands are to the center of the web, the spider, the more secretive and exclusive they are. 
and the further they go out, the, 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 they eventually start to um, be organizations that interact with mainstream society that people would know about. Um, so there are different levels of it. That, uh, how close to the spider is it? Um, um, on one level, you've got this, um, this crown temple where you get the Knights Temple and people like that, Knights of Malta involved. Um, and on another level, uh, the, uh, beyond them, basically they're, they're controlled through the Vatican. Um, and the Vatican City, of course, is a city within a country. Um, uh, it's got its own uh, diplomatic um, operation uh, uh, and its own uh, national identity, the Vatican City. Well, what a lot of people don't realize, um, <laughs> even perhaps especially in Britain, is that the City of London Financial District, um, what is known as the City of London, the original City of London, around St. Paul's Cathedral and the Bank of England, that's also like a Vatican City. It's got its own police force. It's got its own uh, operation. It is, in fact, a country within a country uh, in which the Queen has to ask permission uh, of the people that, that, that run the, it um, to enter it. Um, uh, and, and so um, the Knights Templar and people like that, that, that in, the, in the end answer to the Vatican, which then answers to the real center of the spider, all these non-human entities and stuff that I'm talking about, um, that um, is, is involved in the, in the control of the, of the city of London. Uh, and, and that has a fundamental effect on the, not just the global economy, but, 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 but the, the global um, manipulation in general. And uh, the legal profession um, in Britain, which is run and, and, and out of that around the world, is run from a, a place called the temple. Um, which is named after the fact that um, a Knights Templar temple is in that area. So they call it the temple. It's the, um, it's the temple that was featured in uh, the Da Vinci Code um, in, the, in, uh, in the temple part of, of, of London. And that um, very close to where that temple is, that original Knights Tem Templar temple, uh, is, is, are all the, the centers secret societies and the chambers of the major barristers and legal firms of Britain and the, uh, the, the lawyer um, legal networks that go out into manipulating the uh, legal system of America and Australia and, 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 and endless other places. And just down the road from where that Knights Templar temple is um, are the chambers where Tony Blair um, was um, was working at one point and, and his wife Cherry Blair and, and and so the temple area the temple district of London the next place on is the city of London and at the cusp a place that's known as Temple Bar where the the temple the the center of control of the legal system in Britain and wider afield meets the city of London, the control of not just the British economy and the British governments, but, but, the, but massively the world situation. At that point where the two uh, areas meet is, is a, a flying uh, reptile on, on, a, on a, uh, a, a big um, kind of um, uh, plinth, if, if you like, in the middle of the road. Um, it's a very famous um, um, symbol. And when you enter the city of London, um, not just there, but, 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 but through other roads, um, you pass uh, massive symbols of flying reptiles holding the shield with a red cross and the white background, which is the symbol of the Knights Templar. Uh, if, if you understand the symbolism, they're telling you who controls the bloody place. Uh, and, um, and, and so the, 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 the Vatican is, is, appears to be uh, the center of a religion but actually, it's the it's the center in so many ways of a secret society network, mm -hmm. which uses religion to pl placate and suppress and, and, uh, the population. And it does it by uh, producing um, a, a written text, which we call the, the, the Bible, the holy book. Um, and of course, the Jew Jewish religion has a version of that. With, with again the Old Testament of the Bible and the Torah uh, and and the um, uh, the Talmud, the, the much deeper esoteric level, uh, you've got um, the Quran with um, the uh, the Muslims, etc. And these are texts that are written on on one level for the 
the the the congregation or, or the followers of the religion to take literally but because of the way words don't mean what they in their esoteric behind the scenes sense that they do in the way that we're told to believe them and, and what they mean mm -hmm. they're, 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 those texts can also be read in a completely different way so you said earlier I've been saying it for years there's this outer religion which is basically um, the people following the religion taking the texts literally there's this inner core uh, behind all that uh, behind all the men in frocks and the, the, the people with the the, the fish head bloody um, hats, the, the mitre and all the rest of it, which again is massively symbolic going back to Babylon and such like, um, they, um, they have a completely different understanding of the same texts and what the religion is really saying and what the religion is really about and what its motivations are. So there's an outer religion and there's an inner cabal that um, are using the outer religion as a cover for its activities. And do they use Kabbalism? The Kabbal is, 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 is very uh, fundamental. The esoteric knowledge um, in, in, in the Kabbal and is very um, much used by this network, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and even deeper, deeper levels of understanding that, of course, are never uh, written down for public consumption. Even, even on the level of the Kabbal, there's, um, um, a, um, there's a deeper level even than that, that, that the inner, inner initiates um, um, the, have, that the, the, the outer the, initiates don't have. The aura one-to-one -one transmission, so to speak. Yeah, and the, what, you, what you've got with the, the Kabbalah, of course, um, is um, the same uh, phonetics, basically, as Kabbal. Uh, and uh, that's not a coincidence. It's, it's very bloody appropriate. Now, you're talking about the, the spider in the web, and I think the Vatican is one of the biggest spiders in the web. Well, on, on this level, at least, because we're not talking about the multidimensional, interdimensional, extraterrestrials here for now. Um, what I like, because we also talked about the royals, and you've explained that, uh, we can also talk, what you discuss in your book, about the hive mind, and there's the queen and the workers. I think that's maybe even more appropriate than uh, the spider and the web here. Uh, what I think is interesting, you mentioned the Da Vinci Code in relation to the Vatican. Of course, in, the, in this kind of field, there's a lot of disinformation. Um, I'm curious, you have a different kind of view of what the Da Vinci Code is probably on purpose uh, stating that it's all about the secret of the lineage of Jesus, but I believe um, that's bollocks in your case, right? Well, I'm not, I'm not saying it's necessarily done on purpose. It might have been done on purpose, um, uh, but, it, but it might not. It might have just have been taking a story from, from um, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, which was um, written as, as fact rather than fiction, mm. and, and turning it into a story. It might be that. Either way, um, whether it's Holy Blood, Holy Grail that was written as fact or, or, or the Da Vinci Code that was written as faction, if you like, um, fiction, but, but with a, 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 a lot of uh, alleged truth. And I think there, there was, there, there, there was, because there is a secret society network and they are hiding secrets. The question is, what are the bloody secrets, John? That's the question. Mm. Um, and and the, the, the whole uh, basis of Holy Blood, Holy Grail and the Da Vinci Code was that there was a man called Jesus who didn't die on the cross, or if he did, um, he, he impregnated um, Mary Magdalene in the Bible stories, and um, and and she um, headed to um, southern France, and uh, uh, eventually a, a bloodline of Jesus emerged and uh, became the um, Merovingian bloodline in France. Um, which is connected to um, virtually all, uh, if not all, of the surviving royal families of Britain, um, uh, uh, located in, in, in what we call now um, uh, Paris, uh, but um, uh, um, a major a bloodline at one point um, in France, now what we call France. Uh, now that's all based on the fact that um, this bloodline is known about by the Roman uh, Catholic Church and that it is used secrecy and secret societies to suppress that knowledge. Um, that's the whole basis of these things. But um, it's based on one thing. Its whole foundation is on one thing, and that's that there was a Jesus, and I'm saying there wasn't. Um, when you read the Jesus stories, um, which in, through the, 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 the Gospels are very contradictory in, in, in many ways, but, but there are um, themes for sure. Uh, then 
that same basic story has been told many, many, many times around the world in um, um, endless different um, cultures, not just um, in, in, in Europe and the, and the Middle East. I was down at um, the home of uh, Kredo Mutwa, the Zulu shaman. He's coming up to his 90th year now, um, uh, back in August. And he's built, or had built, um, uh, kind of um, organized to be built, um, a couple of stone circles um, in, in, next to his house. And also uh, a, a brilliant um, statues, um, which he creates and paints and what, what have you, um, symbolizing various ancient legends and situations in, in Africa. And one of them is of a man with, um, I think it was a, a crown of thorns, I'm sure that was there on his head, um, dying in the, in, the, in the arms of these uh, people. And I said to him, what's that? He looks like Jesus. He said, well, yeah, but um, he said it's not. Because he said um, when the um, missionaries came in to, um, to Africa, and, and started bringing the Christian religion and imposing it upon um, the, the black African tribes at the time. The credo was saying uh, that a, a lot of people, the, the black people, black tribes, didn't have a problem with that because the basic story was the story they were already telling about some, someone else under a different name mm. uh, in Africa. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you, 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 you see the, the symbol of the um, the dying God of, of the, the sacrificed God uh, who died to save humanity um, again and again and again uh, uh, repeated around the world uh, uh, and you know it, they just take the same story and they relocate it in another location and another historical setting and another religion unfolds um, as a result of it and so when you look at the um, evidence for the existence of Jesus, the existence of, of, of what happened, um, and of course, if what happened happened, there would have been some tremendously uh, wide-ranging accounts of it. I mean, crikey, you know, uh, what, what was supposed to have happened. But there are none. And, and those that few here and there that do appear have um, invariably been shown to have been put in there later to support the claims of the Christian religion that that its story was true and had uh, historical um, uh, support uh, and but there is none it's like uh, you look at the um, uh, Old Testament stories of the Israelites and, 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 and what they were supposed to be and what they should have done and uh, archaeologists and what have you and historians who've studied that have, have, have found there is no evidence whatsoever that any of that happened um, and so um, without Jesus, there can be no bloodline of Jesus. Therefore, there can be no secrecy to stop people knowing about the bloodline of Jesus. What there is, is a secret society network, and the Vatican is very much involved in it. Mm -hmm. What there is, um, is a massive secret about um, the manipulation of human history, the manipulation of human genetics, the manipulation of human life to this day, minute by minute, and the secret society networks that are there to keep that quiet. Uh, among many other things. That's the secret. And so I look at Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and I think there were genuine people. I'm not even going to go on. Um, uh, you know, this stuff takes some uncovering because he doesn't want to be uncovered. Uh, and you look at the Da Vinci Code, and, and I'm saying that there are that, uh, some of the fundamentals of secret societies and secrets are right, but the nature of the secrets, are, I think, are fundamentally um, misunderstood, uh, uh, being charitable, misunderstood. Different players, same game plan, you say somewhere. That's what I'm thinking of in politics. Two sides, well, basically one puppet player at the back doing the same game plan. It doesn't matter what the polarities are. And uh, it's the same with religion, so it seems. Uh, by, by the way, is um, and I think we have to close down uh, the list of questions here. But is, is Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, um, I'm, 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 I, I was supposed to be somewhere uh, like... Like 10 hours ago, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but <laughs> this... this this, this, is, this has been such an interesting conversation that I, um, I've, um, I, 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 I've kind of delayed it, but I better get off soon. Okay, well, th thank you for that indirect compliment. I didn't see any comment on Skype, so I thought, well, he either forgot... Don't get me into comments on Skype. That's too, technical. <laughs> That's too technical for me, mate. Well, that, That's too technical for me. There was resonance for me saying, like, okay, if he really had to go, he would probably type something or said something. All right, gotcha. No, no. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm, uh, I was enjoying it. I was enjoying it very much. It's been a very interesting conversation. Likewise. It's been an honor for me, and I feel extremely privileged to have uh, had this, uh, this talk. I think we covered a lot of ground, and we got a lot of important information. I want to tell the people, I have a lot of books here because you wrote a lot of books. They all feel uh, important. I read them all, but uh, I think the, the last one, Human Race, Get Off Your Knees, The Lion Sleeps No More, the title is uh, extremely obvious. I think it's up to us and to our infinite consciousness to change our perception, to change our reality and therefore empower us back into a position where we can create our manifestation, our reality, uh, the way we want, right? Any closing comments from your end, David? Uh, just a round of applause to that, really. Um, uh, but we, we're now um, in very, very exciting times because um, Clearly, uh, and I have the privilege to travel a great deal and, and talk about this, and, and therefore I, I, I meet and I observe and experience people from many, many different cultures. I'm just going in February to the Ukraine, and you know, it's the first movement to, to get this information through into, the, um, into, the, into Eastern Europe, and, and I'm going to Mexico, and, 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 uh, where I've never been for the first time. I, I, I've just... Um, well, not I've been, but never spoken there on this, these subjects. And same with Spain, same with um, uh, Portugal. And um, wherever I go, the minds are opening. People are getting it. People are remembering. Because I'm not telling anyone what they don't already know. I'm just, I'm just saying, do, do you remember? Do you, do you remember this basically? Because we, at, at, at deeper levels, we all know this stuff. And that's one of the powers uh, of behind people waking up now so fast is that. They're remembering. They're not being told something new. That's just a, a reminder. Uh, like, you remember who you are? Remember? Oh, yes. That's basically the, what's happening. And so um, it's an amazing uh, uh, transformation that started to really motor to the point where it's at that point where it's starting to impact, and we've seen nothing yet, impact on, on society and, and uh, the, the way events unfold. And... Um, at the same time, of course, the control system uh, has got everything it has in its remaining armory, and it's going to throw them um, in its panic-stricken way, though it's going to appear very cold and calculated on the outside. It's like a duck, you know, it's, it seems very calm on the surface, but it's paddling like crazy underneath. Um, so these two things are happening, you know, the, um, the irresistible force, which is the truth vibrations, and the immovable object, which thinks it is but isn't, which is the control system, and they're, they're now, um, you know, stepping out onto the stadium with a ball in each, uh, in each hand um, to, um, to play this out in public now, because that's, that's where it's going to be played out more and more and more in the mainstream over the next few years. And uh, it, these are very exciting times, uh, times when uh, we can have the privilege, and that's what it is, of playing a part in the transformation of human awareness uh, from the prison to the paradise, because that's where we're heading. That's where... Um, particularly our grandchildren and, and, and many of the younger people today will, will, will experience through their lives uh, compared with what they've, uh, we've experienced up to this point and generations before us have experienced. It's, it's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful time. They, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I loved it that last year when you did your 10-hour talk, you expressed the, the, I think, very important feeling I also felt. Don't fight just hold your ground and work with your consciousness and your chains of perception and the real reality and uh, create and manifest what you do want. Create a paradise on earth if you have the opportunity because if you fight, you exactly identify and attract those forces do not want to become manifested in the world because they are already are because of the manipulation. So, uh, What you fight, you become. What yes. you fight, you become. You, we've seen this over and over again. Uh, you don't fight for peace, you're peace for peace. You know, it's real simple. Um, if, the, the, the new epoch is the end of fighting because fighting is a manifestation of mind. Consciousness does not fight, it just is. And it will not have anyone else telling it what it is and what it will do and won't do. Um, it will do what it, it, it knows is right um, and not what some control system tells it it must do mind fights because mind is um, the village idiot compared with consciousness. 
great closing remarks and thank you david for a great interview discussion talk um, some more talk when you come to amsterdam holland 27th of november people if you are still listening and i hope you are please visit www.davidike.com and go to purityevents.nl to see if there are still tickets left for the amsterdam rye event 27th of november uh, you can also go to pearlsium.nl that's their other side and go to healingsoundmovement.com if you want to know more about this radio show. This is John Consumoto signing off and thanking David Ide again for a great talk and I hope to see you soon in the three-dimensional illusionary world but still in the flesh in Amsterdam. Thank you very much for your time, David. Cheers, John, and I look forward to seeing you in a few days. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Healing Sound Movement Radio Your non Life Radio. Expect the unexpected. Keep it sacred. Don't keep it secret. Contact us at info at healingsoundmovement.com or go to www.healingsoundmovement.com Healing Sound Movement, your non-local life radio.